for a minute, we're going to look at this torso model and we're going to kind of take it from the angle of hormones. There are lots of other features here, but we're going to look at hormones for just a few minutes. In the kind of in the middle of the brain area, there is a tadpole looking organ here at the back of this area. And that is the pineal gland. And it is uh, circadian rhythms are associated with pineal, sensitive to light. The section right here in the middle is called the diencephalon. And the, mm, the walls are created by the thalamus. Well, down at the bottom of the thalamus is the hypothalamus. And then that sits right above the pituitary gland. There's an anterior, a posterior pituitary gland. And that's really not well viewed in this model, but that's okay. If we look at the neck, this gland in the neck is called the thyroid gland, and it receives TSH to, re to release T3 and T4. That's what helps to regulate metabolism. I did pull the heart out just a moment ago. Let me mention that while I'm taking all these pieces out. The heart is an hormonal structure in that it releases atrial natriuretic, oops, atrial natriuretic peptide. If there's too much stroke volume coming through the heart, it will tell the kidneys, uh, the kidneys right here, to flush sodium and to decrease the blood volume. Let's see if we can get a little bit of light on this subject. Inside of the body cavity, the abdominal cavity is the adrenal gland, and the adrenal gland has an adrenal cortex and an, and an adrenal medulla. The cortex secretes aldosterone, cortisol, and androgens in response to ACTH from the anterior pituitary. The inside of the adrenal is the adrenal medulla, and that is the site of secretion of epinephrine, norepinephrine, adrenaline, noradrenaline, that can be released from direct nerve uh, action in the body. It doesn't have to be a hormone that travels through the blood to, to stimulate that. The kidneys themselves are hormonal organs. They release erythropoietin in response to low oxygen levels, and they tell the bones to secrete more uh, I'm sorry, I said secrete to make more blood, poietic, hematopoietic tissue. Now, if we looked under the breastbone right here, which we don't have, there is a thymus gland, and that thymus gland is what helps process some of the lymphocytes. If they have a, a T designation, like a helper T or a cytotoxic T, they've been processed through the thymus gland, which is normally located in this area. Let's talk about the pancreas just for a few minutes. Uh, the pancreas looks like a banana pepper right here, and it is both exocrine and endocrine. Its exocrine secretions go into the duodenum, and uh, there are acinar cells that, that secrete that. In the pancreas itself, there are islets of Langerhans, and there are several different kinds of cells, alpha cells in these islets, secrete glucagon, beta cells, insulin, and delta cells, uh, somatostatin. If we look further down in the pelvis and look at these little almond-shaped structures on either side of the uterus, these are the ovaries. And of course, if we had a male, we would have testes. That just about concludes the hormonal structures on the torso.